Call Halalia, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rakah Kadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone who taught us this truth. Shalom and salutations to the hopeful elect that I came out to spread the gospel throughout the four corners of the earth in sincerity and truth and present their bodies as a living sacrifice as the scriptures teach us to do. All right, Shalom to the very few sisters that do listen as well. All right. Once again, double honors to the apostles and the elders and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Just once again, man. You know, because it's precious to be in this truth, man. And you know, you got to honor. And salute the men that's walking this walk, talking this talk, and, and, and partaking in this spiritual journey with you, and hopefully getting the first round draft pick into the kingdom of heaven and being refined on this side, man. It's a beautiful walk, you know. Hey, I don't agree. I don't necessarily like, you know, every brother that I know. But hey, man, I, I kill and die for all of them, man, because this labor and love is uh, it's fucking real, man. But nevertheless, man, so that's the salute. That's where we get it from, man from here you know but hey man I'm just coming to you with a quick lesson you know some things were on my mind you know the elder Yashawamba you know he he, he kind of deemed the saying you know we and it's been yearning for years you know but he had put it on wax you know that a man can't really be a man in this kingdom and that's true you know but in the ancient world you know we had we, you know he was saying you know how we read about our forefathers about david about abraham about these mighty things esau edom and he's gonna pay for this the self-proclaimed white man is gonna pay for reducing us to nothing to boys and feminine little just niggas man he took and turned yasha allah he prince with power or he prince with with god you know he took yasha allah and turned him into little nigglets man and nigger nuggets and jodies and that's what we grew up in the society and coming back into our heritage, we breaking that 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 uh, yoke, man, that's been placed on our mind. But the Lord is making us, you know, holy, righteous, honorable, and acceptable men. Hey, but our women, man, and our people don't value us, man. But especially the women of our people, because it just is what it is, man. These are the curses. But nevertheless, I'm gonna get into this lesson, man. Hey, this is Isaiah 13 and 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ufer. I'm going to read it again. It's Isaiah 13 and 12. It says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ufer. So the Lord said that he was making a man more precious than gold, man, because in this feminine Queen of Heaven, Babylonian society, we are put down. And the two biggest enemies that that put down and that uh that cashierate and shut down and suppress your manhood is Esau, Edom, of course, and the so-called black woman, the Israelite woman. Starting with the black woman, though, man. You know, they suppress your manhood, man. They have you feel depressed, you know, weak. You can't even you for you for or you know if you a dominant man, you feel like you in a house with a nigga, man. You know, it's a struggle for dominance, man. And that's because Esau, going back to Eve and the serpent, you know, which is another lesson for another time. That's all the black woman, that, 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 uh, the, the, uh, cahoots and the companionship that the black woman has with the white man. It all goes back to Eve and the serpent. But the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah said he's making a man more precious than gold, man. You know, and he's going to lift us up, man. When our king, Yahweh Shah, comes back and we feeling that in the earth, man. Hey, when you go around these other nations, man, and they women, man, I'm going to tell you something. I got a saying, man, and you you motherfuckers can use it. Now, you, but you better remember where you heard it from. The devil daughter treats you like God. Never forget that. The devil daughter treats you like God, man. Hey, I done had an Edomite woman look me dead in the face and say she ready for slavery. It's of a truth because this is going to come. This is Isaiah 32. And one, it says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, and the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And that's what a man is going to be. He's going to be a hiding place it's before the coming of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, man, because that king dwelling in righteousness is going to set us up, man. That's Yahweh Shai setting up the elect, man, and ruling this place, man. But before this, it's going to be a lot of atrocities, man. It's going to be real Book of Eli-like out here, man. And you seen what Eli was. He was a protection. 
he was a cover from that woman. And one of the words of, uh, of Cobra, uh, of uh, that Cobra, C-O-V-E-R-T, you know, I think I had seen it in the Webster's Memorum. I think the Apostle Elder Gabbai had brought it out a long time ago in a, in a lesson, and it, and it went to the regular dictionary. It went to uh, having uh, having been covered by a man through marriage. And the only way you're going to be covered by a man through marriage is what really consummates marriage through sex. So Isaiah 4 and 1 is coming, man. We're getting our dignity back. We're getting our manhood back because our manhood has been taken from us through, through the wickedness of Esau, man, through giving these women goodies, man. He give them all type of shit to be wicked, man, to, to be um, solo. You know, the scripture said that, uh, that a man, the man is not dependent, independent of the woman or the woman of the man, paraphrasing. You know, they were made for each other. The man is the head, you know. It says, Yahweh is the head. It tells you this in Corinthians, Yahweh is the head. Under him is Yahweh Shai. Under Yahweh Shai is the Israelite male. And then it's the Israelite woman. That's the order. They don't talk about being a single black woman, man. You know, that's some wickedness that Esau taught. You know, I'm going to get Isaiah 4. But before I get that, I think it's Jeremiah 31. Come on, Jeremiah 31 and 22. It says, how long wilt thou go, O thou backsliding daughter? For Yahweh hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. And the woman, you know, through this society, has, 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 I want to say it, but I don't, what well, well, the scriptures say it. You know, a woman has passed a man. So spiritually, in her wicked ass spirit, in her, her mind, her heart that's been deceived, you know, she feels that she's the woman. And that, I mean, still like the woman feels that she's the man, and that degrades you. Hey, but something very spiritual happened to me, and I'm going to share this experience. All this happened within like um, a week, two weeks, right? Because we getting our manhood back, man. Our manhood has been taken through Esau and his system, but, you know, we getting our manhood back, brothers, you know? So don't trip on that. But I was walking down the street. No, 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 the first one, I was with the brothers, man. And, you know, we was out. Downtown Chicago, some shenanigans, you know. We, we got dressed to impress, so to speak, you know. We had on nice cologne, you know. We was just fucking around. You know, I'd be chilling, you know. I had a woman and shit, so I don't really try to do much, but I know them spots to bring the brothers to to get them, um, you know, the ladies, so to speak. So, you know, we chilling, you know. We were the group of uh, Edomite women, man, and they were just chilling. They was talking, the brothers were talking, and I'm just a fucking la la land over here, peeping everything out. And it was a fine-ass nigga woman, man. And she was a white woman. Or like some little Arab-looking bitch. But nevertheless, she had some water. And I was just fucking with her, right? And um, I said, hey, let me get some of that water. She said, this all you want? I said, no, nah, I don't want your water. And she, she looked at her friend. And she said, hey, look at this man. Now, I was clean and shit. And I had on the, like a designer tank top, some designer jeans, some expensive shoes, like but that, that wasn't, she seen the spirit, man. Because because it was what she said, man. She said, look at this man. You know, just look at him. And her friend was like, what? And like, she was bugged out. And she was like, no. She said something very spiritual. She said, because if we was in the wilderness, this would be the man to lead us. This would be the go-to man. This is a man. All this brother wants is my water. You can have this water. And I was like, fuck, I was humbled, man. That, that bitch humbled me, man, in a way. Like, I was just like, fuck. And another brother was there. I forgot which brother was it, but he didn't even really get 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 the grasp of what the bitch was saying. Then I had went and told Kapatis out what the bitch said, and it blew his mind. And I was drunk as fuck. But that kind of sobered me up, man, that I said, damn, man, we getting that power back. And I also thought about what Yahweh Shai said in the Gospels, you know, about offering a, a prophet a cup of cold water, you know. It, it was deep, man. You know, it was real deep. Then, like, another week ago, it was a woman. She was kind of fat. You know, I don't really like the fat woman. But I claimed that lady, and I claimed the other one anyway. I was walking to the train, man, and the chick had seen me. And she was like, hey, man, you know, what's up? You know, that's a man right there. She was talking to the other ladies. She said, that's a man right there. And I was like, like, hey, you know, like being modest and shit, or trying to be, aspiring to be. She was like, hey, come here. And the bitch just looked at me. She said, this is a man. And she kissed my hand, man, and I walked off. But I said, damn, man, we getting that, that regalia back, man. And that's going to come, man. 
You know, our women say they with us on this side, they ain't with us, man. But that 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 regalia is coming back, man. And they definitely losing to the women of the other nations, man. Cause them bitches, man. You go around them, man, and you feel like a whole new being. <laughs> but nevertheless, cause that's what a king is used to. A king is used to being served, man. We ain't no goddamn. We don't come from a bloodline of simps. Esau turned us into niggas, man. Hey, this is Isaiah four and one. It says, "And that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach." How is a woman called by your name, man? And you see, this is the attitude. The attitude that our women had on this side was, "Oh, what could a nigga do for me?" Knowing you done slept with a hundred men, got three to four kids that ain't fucking mine, but you want me to get with you, come in your house, pay your bills while you talk shit, look on the phone all day, probably looking, making memes, getting fed all this bullshit in your head about how niggas ain't shit, and you got a man sitting right here in the living room that can do any fucking thing he wants to but to choose to be with y'all ass. You know, that's why they're going to be cut and humbled in that day. That's why they said we, we will bring our own things to the table. Just let us be called by thy name, man. Manhood, masculinity is coming back in a big fashion. What you call polygamy is coming back in a big fashion. Hey, this is our culture, and our women are going to understand that. Matter of fact, I'm going to finish it with this, man. You know, we we, we just going to get our manhood back. You know, and that's just that, man. What is it, First Kings? Because I know it was with the beloved Malak Duar, David, King David. Writing the Holy Scriptures. Come. Hey, this is 1 Kings 1 and 14. It says, Behold, while yet thou talkest there with the king, I will also come in after thee and confirm thy words. You got to peep this scene. Verse 15, it says, And Bathsheba went in, went in unto the king's chamber, and the king was very old, and Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. So you got to set this in your head. Abishag the Shunammite was a young fine ass Israelite woman and she served the king man she was sitting there he was probably in the of course he was in his bed his chamber she was rubbing him down probably you know rubbing his head probably kissing on him all right and what happens next it says and Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king and said what what is thou and the Salaki and the king said what what is thou so his woman seeing him in the bed with another woman getting rubbed down and this is a man after Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai's own heart. What did she do? She bowed down before she even started conversation, man. This is how great of a level that the Israelite man has been stripped from, man. This shit was righteous and mighty, man. All right? It said, And she said unto them, My Lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy power unto thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me. And he shall sit upon thy throne. So she, she had a question, you know, with him. But nevertheless, the point was, that's the regalia state we was in, man. Even in the book of Esther, man. You see how, how the girl who was set up before Esther, she got out of line in Esther, the first chapter. And the king's counselors, and he wasn't an Israelite king, but it was the ancient world. The king's wise men said, hey, you got to shut her down for our women start acting out of line like this. And that's why Esau set up the Beyonce's and the WAP. Fucking Megan Stallion, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B type whores, man. To, so that our women can bring us. You you have to be a real simp to marry a bitch like that and be rich to yourself. Like this punk ass nigga Offset, he's a fucking simp. Niggas look up to that nigga. That nigga's a fucking monkey, man. Letting this bitch get on TV and show herself and act a goddamn fool, man. And the bitches say you insecure if you don't let her do that. Man, these hoes are out they mind, man. Hey, but. Our manhood is coming back in a big fashion, man. Just just watch, man. A call allowed you, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Bukal Kadash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone and to the hopeful elect. A Shalom. And if a motherfucking woman got a problem with that, hey, you tell her to cover her nappy ass head and read Micah 7 and 10. Hallelujah.